For pretty much any patient that's having surgery, we typically give them perioperative antibiotics right before they get cut into. Giving the patient antibiotics basically helps reduce any surgical site infections, which can be a huge cause of morbidity and mortality in the post-operative time. The medication that we tend to use most often is cephalosporin, that's called Anceph, or Cephazolin and we typically give it IV. There's really two doses that you need to know about, and it's either gonna be two grams for anyone who's less than 120 kilograms, or it's gonna be three grams if anyone is greater than 120 kilograms. Most institutions will probably have something like this where it's a vial full of powder that needs to get reconstituted in a saline syringe, or sometimes you can find pre-mixed bags that you would just infuse with a secondary set on the IV. Each of these vials is one gram, so if you need two grams, you would just reconstitute two of these in a syringe. Reconstituting this medication looks something like this where you have a saline syringe with a needle, then you inject that saline into the vial like this, and then you inject and aspirate back and forth until you break up a lot of the clumps in there, and then you aspirate out that fluid, and then in your syringe you now have one gram of ANSEF. We tend to use cephalosporins because they have a pretty narrow uh, spectrum of what bacteria that they cover, and the usual suspects for surgical site infections are going to be Staph aureus or Staphylococcus epidermis. If your patient's having surgery, let's say for example in the pelvis or having colorectal surgery, you may add on additional antibiotics such as Flagyl or Metronidazole, which has a broader spectrum of coverage for some of the other possible bacteria that could cause an infection. If your patient has a history of a MRSA infection or methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, then you're going to want to add on Vancomycin, which the bolus dose for that is going to be 15 milligrams per kilogram but usually you want to infuse this over the course of about 60 minutes. If you infuse it too fast, you can either get hypotension or red man syndrome, where you see the patient's skin start to turn red, which become very irritating and uncomfortable for the patient. When we're using ANSEF, there's a couple times that we need to redose it during a surgical procedure. So if the surgery is lasting longer than four hours, then every four hours we will redose the dose of ANSEF that was given at the beginning of the surgery. And if a patient has lost more than 1,500 mLs of blood loss, then we would also replace the ANSEF or the antibiotic because then we're assuming that most of the blood that was carrying the ANSEF has now been lost. And so you want to make sure there's enough of a loading dose or a blood level of the antibiotic circulating throughout the body. Lastly, it's very common to have patients who say they've had a penicillin reaction um, or some sort of reaction when they were a kid. Typically, this can mean that there was some sort of nausea, rash um, that happened when they were a kid, most of these patients do totally fine when getting a cephalosporin. In fact, there's very little cross-reactivity and the benefit of giving this antibiotic and resisting or preventing surgical site infections far outweighs the risk of possibly having a rash or some sort of redness from getting the cephalosporin. The one place that we do pause is if there's any history of having anaphylaxis with the cephalosporin. That's a position where we don't want to give that antibiotic uh, because we're anticipating that they could have another severe reaction like anaphylaxis. So in this case, we usually use an alternative agent. Clindamycin is what our institution uses most frequently as an alternative to ANSEF.